broke stones and made a kind of structure with the, the stones. Uh, and filled it up with earth, very fertile earth, uh, down and on top of it uh, a, a bit poor earth. Uh, so uh, the Mediterranean uh, plants can go on top and uh, those are the plants who, which need a lot of sun and then, well, spiralizing down, it's get the, the, um, well, the, the, you can use the shade and the sun and uh, uh, a le lack of wind and a, l a lot more wind. Uh, in the spiral, and that's well. You're just using, used or not using. You're just cooperating with nature, and I think that's what permaculture is all about. That um, well, human beings think they have to take care of her. They have to consume less. They have to well. They have to do a lot. They have to. They must a lot. And uh, permaculture, as far as I know, is also about human being. Is not a human being is nothing more than a part of nature. So you should cooperate with nature. And, uh, but you can also change a little bit and uh, let go, let nature cooperate with you. And so that's the beginning. And I think you can also. With the vision of permaculture, you can also create houses. Maybe you know the earth, earth ship, and uh, but also how should the community uh, stick together? Uh, or uh, for instance, what kind of exchange do you want to, between two or three or ten or one hundred communities? Then you're talking about something which, well, we. As of now, we use money, but of course that money is not very healthy and uh, sustainable. It's sustainable but money with interest is absolutely impossible. So that's why permaculture is also attracting me uh, a lot because they are always thinking in cycles, and uh, I think. We also, in economics and monetary systems and so on, we should also uh, think in cycles. And if you look at the cycle uh, of money with interest, then you also you have to create more and more money. But we don't have more and more earth. So that cannot be sustainable. garden bed, you never ever again walk on it, or you never again press on it. Because that means compaction and you want as much air and oxygen into the soil as you, uh, you can get. So there's the next thing, is about if, you, if you're gonna go do non-dig gardening, you uh, make permanent beds. You don't make new beds and you don't dig, dig over the soil every year. You, in the first time you, you design your garden, you, you implement your garden, you design it with beds that are permanently there and with pathways between them that are permanently there and you never make them that wide that you cannot reach from the sides. So um, the, the distance from the edge of a bed to the middle of the bed should be 60 centimeters, which is what you, what you can reach with your arms. So the, the top width of a bed is twice that, which is uh, 1 meter 20. So from both sides you can reach to the middle of the, the bed. 
which is a very important thing. And another thing, which is actually probably the most important thing about permaculture, which I completely forgot to mention, is that different than any other system, it's not only a system about practical stuff and how you do it, it's, it has an ethical basis. Because you've got 10 or 12, depending on who you follow, um, design principles within permaculture. And if you look at those principles, they are made and thought of to, to make your system as efficient as possible, to produce the most yield with the least labor, on the least surface as possible. Um, those principles, I bet if you look at the, the company structure or big multinationals like Shell or other evil, evil multinationals, you will probably notice that a lot of those design principles are actually present in those organizations. The reason that, that, um, that uh, permaculture is completely different is that it has an ethical basis. So there's three ethical principles which are the very core and that's the main thing about permaculture is that um, the three principles are earth care, people care and fair shares. So those are also your design aims and those are something you always keep in mind when you design your system whether it's a village, a house or a food production system is that if you design it you first look at does it take care of the earth? Are you using chemicals? Are you digging over the soil? Are you uh, doing stuff that doesn't take care of the earth? We're not busy with permaculture. And the second thing is, okay, you can take care of the earth as much as you want. You can build um, nature areas and nature conservation areas, nature parken, which is great and which we should do. But people have to live in it as well. So we need to produce food. We need to make shelter. We need to make uh, social structures. Humans like social, you know, we like social interaction. So that's the second principle of permaculture, it's like the ethical basis is taking care of the earth and taking care of people. Of course they come from each other, they follow from each other. If you want to take care of people, you have to take care of the earth. And the third is, you, cut, you, you I mean, Shell is very good at taking care of people. A few people at the top, a few people will get rich over it. That's the, the third main important principle, ethical principle of permaculture is fair shares. Do not take more um, from the earth. Uh, then, then you really need. You, you can, you can uh, right now our food production system for just the Western world um, is making it impossible to live in in lots of third world countries. So, um, if everybody on this earth would behave, would behave like we behave in Europe and America to supply everybody with that same resources that we are using, we would need four Earths, we would need four planets to actually supply that. So taking your fair share and not more is like the third important ethical principle of permaculture. I think this is actually high enough. If there's a few, there's a few bricks left, we can use them for the last bit. Instead of the bricks. Instead of the bricks, you can use this one. Because if we go higher, if we go more steep, then the, the, the soil will just, you know, start spiraling down as well. calculations in economics concern the monetary system and I already explained that the monetary system isn't a sustainable system and it's doomed to be to come to an end so I decided to stop because I don't want to sell the nonsense about economics anymore so I started to wanting to be a teacher because um, I like uh, students so uh, between 10 and 20 years old I like to, to, to the problems they make and uh, the, the interesting or oh, problems are very interesting so the interesting things the growing up of uh, people so I like students and I don't like to talk about nonsense with them so I stopped
make you realizing this thing? The 1st of October, my uh, daughter hey, joined hey, uh, hey. Uh, a demonstration uh, against the anti kraakwet in Amsterdam. And the way uh, uh, police uh, and, and, and government uh, behaved against the crackers uh, disappointed her really. And uh, if I saw her sadness about it, I decided that I should join uh, the first, the beginning of uh, Occupy, 15th of uh, October. And um, I joined a group, uh, an Occupy group, um, investigating uh, banking, uh, financial and monetary systems. And that started, that triggered me to think of economics in my own way, instead of the way it was taught to me. And it's just simple. You have a, a secondary school, a fourth, fourth class secondary school, with that knowledge of economics uh, in my time. Uh, it's quite simple if you just have sane brains to get to know um, that there's something wrong with the system. In the permaculture you have uh, a phase one mistake, a phase two, phase three, phase four mistake of the fourth grade. And if you have a mistake of, of the first grade, that's the, the worst, then you have to start over, all over again. Just, you know, like if we have a, made a mistake with the, with the, with the uh, her pyramid, a phase one mistake, we just have to pull it out all. And that's what's wrong with the monetary system. We just have to start at the bottom. We have to break it, out, break it down and, and start again. Because, uh, well, in 1863, uh, one of the Rothschild brothers wrote down something like um, the, those who take profit of this system and the one who are dependent on it, they will shut their mouth. They will, won't. Uh, and the other ones uh, on earth are just too stupid to understand how bad this system is for themselves. 1863, so that's 150 years ago, it was already known that this system is just evil. It's evil. It's not stupid, it's evil. So there's no innocence in it.